What's happening y'all? Welcome back to the channel and the dusty roads of Texas and we are heading to meet up with some of my buddies right now to carry on a hunting tradition that I've done for years. I am yet to harvest my first whitetail of the season in Texas or anywhere and I've actually purchased quite a few licenses in different states and I'm going to be doing some traveling to other states to hunt whitetail. I didn't get out there opening day of deer season and really press it that hard just because I've, I've just been able to go on some lifetime bucket list type hunts and it's been incredible, but I do love Texas whitetail hunting. Hitting something. Got a GoPro, got your release. You got a jacket? What's up, LFG folks? Eat good, Dagger. Eat good. I've been watching this buck all year, and I was gonna let him do some breeding, and I let him go a little too long, and he got in a fight and broke off just about half of one side. So I'm still after him because he's an old buck. He's not gonna. He's not gonna grow next year and he might not even produce next year. So. Still a cool deer though. Still cool deer. He's at his prime. He's, he's at his peak. peak. He's at his peak. A little past because of the antler breakage, but. So we're after him and then we got some does that we need to take out of I here. I want some meat. We need, need some meat. We're at the meat, we're at the eat good. Might as well be called the eat good. Yeah, we're not in the critter Ranch. getter right now, but it's back there. It's, it's really been tradition about four or five years going back for me and Outlaw to hunt together and then Last couple years we've we've hunted together, so we're hoping to all get something tonight. We got the old bow.
do some shifting around. He got behind me. I didn't give him much time. The deer didn't give up so much time. As soon as I shot, I'm still shaking. The buck that Jared is here going after comes out. I think he was after the doe that you shot. I think so, but uh, you said the doe was really old, right? Yeah, super old. Yeah. So a lot of these does that uh, they're trying to harvest out here are uh, in estrus and here. Yeah, a little buck right there. There's another little buck coming out here, but. It was a long shot. I like, literally threw a cedar tree. Yeah, this was our shot. Y'all can see us like shuffling around in here. Oh, that's crazy. Because the shot was off to our left and all the deer went all the way away from the corn and went over to the right. So we're going to give it a minute and we're going to go do the recovery. You guys probably can't see this from here, but I can see my glowing knock through the trees. I'm going to try to zoom in on it. Through those trees, my knock is glowing. You kind of see it if you move, move side to side. So fell out or she's dead right there. camp right now to be honest with you I don't feel that great about my shot it's the first time I've ever had an arrow not even pass through so I know I shot on shoulder um, I just think it was high and if too high it may not be in vitals and I did not get that much penetration so I'm nervous the good news is we've got uh, Daisy here she is a tracking dog and uh, we're gonna have to do a little bit more work but Let's go come track her down. Daisy, come here. Daisy, Daisy, here. That's good blood right here. Okay, we got a trail. We got it's a like trail. She opened it up. Good blood. Getting darker. Right, right here. Little drop. Daisy, she's in her butt. Good blood. Having fun running around. Blood, blood, blood. Baby, good. Mm. That's a lot better. Man, she did a circle, circle. What? Yeah. That and that. Just the sand soaked it up. Yeah. It'll be a hot one. The wind's gonna pick up around nine, ten o'clock too. Next morning, y'all, does not look good. Sick Daisy out on the trail, and it was uh, it was really weird how the, how the trail went. So it started off as just like a little trickle right where the arrow broke off, and then we lost it, um, had to come back. Daisy re really never got on a good scent, and then uh, we actually ended up picking it up again. It was making a circle and came almost back to where I first shot her. It got kind of thin, and then um, it was getting late, so we just we stopped. And going back, watching the footage, it just looks like I shot her in an area that is uh, called no man's land. Um, it's it's like a weird spot in the in between the shoulders and the back knee where. You're not really hitting any vitals. So we're gonna look again this morning. There's still some hope there, but what I didn't anticipate was her ducking as much as she did. In my mind, like it all happened so fast, I didn't even look like to me that she ducked, uh, but she did. Anyway, it is time to go out on the hunt again. Uh, my boy Outlaw. Are you not coming we, with us? We gotta get your butt wrangled in. Yeah. So which we saw last night. Let's go.
So he never gave me a shot. He was smart. So far it's been a really good sit. It was slow to start, but now it's like really picking up. There's been a couple of nice bugs come out. They're just out of bow range. It's like a, they just like sick luck. Yeah, they're lying away from me. We've got a lot of wind too right now. It's it's a little swirly. Just wrapped up our sit this morning with Outlaw. We saw four bucks. We're gonna go try to find my doe from last night right now. It's, it's not looking good. It just doesn't feel good. It sucks. It's like above all the vitals, especially when they're quartering two. I had a quartering two shot on a smaller buck that the landowner was telling me to shoot. Uh, same shot you had, same shot placement, almost same broadhead. And uh, what it does, I mean, it doesn't go in very far, but with them ducking, you go in and you kind of hit the opposite shoulder. Because you go in like over this shoulder and hit the opposite shoulder. And then, it, you know, it doesn't hit any vitals, so you just got, you know, tissue blood and just, you know, no bubbles or anything like that. It just kind of kind of like a sore shoulder for them and then whenever they go and duck down under something or they run real fast they, they break the, the arrow off and then they seem to be fine. I had the same type of blood you had just drops no no spraying or nothing like that. And he just watched him walk away. Just watched him walk away. Like he ran good at first didn't really know what hit him. He knew he had an arrow in him but he's just like broke it off and then just walked away. He was like perfectly fine. And no man's land is not a good place to be. Y'all, y'all got it? Where y'all at? Okay, all right. I got your dough, dude. What? <laughs> Are you serious? Oh my God. Good, he should. I can't tell y'all how good I feel right now. Gosh. They take off, and then we went back around, and, and we came back. So from that time, she had went this different different direction. We went all the way around, and she had already bedded down again. Wow. And she was laying down and stuff like that, real thick. And I, I just seen her, and I mean, we were little we shotless from here to there. She wow. was just she was just laying there hurting, and, it, and he, he had like the that. scope on it. Like, like, like grim, so you can see the wound. Yeah, right there. Really I feel so much good. better, man. Yeah, I ain't kidding. Like y'all were just riding around looking for bucks, and then saw her like bedded down. Just happened. Night, so. She was just standing in, standing in the woods, probably 10 or 15 yards from us. And then when she left, she was limping. So and that's, that's probably it. Oh yeah. So we kept, kept following her, kept following her, kept following her, and finally, she turned to the right side, and we could see that wound on her. If you've bow hunted any length of time, you've had these situations happen. It does not feel good. I could hardly sleep last night to be able to uh, get that phone call, and, and they say, "We got your doe. We got your doe." Like it just feels awesome. You know, I feel. I feel like I can move on with life now. So. See that? All right. So here's the broadhead here. Yeah, go ahead and pull that out, dude. Hopefully YouTube lets me show this. This is the arrow. This it is the exit. It just went straight across. Went in right here, came out right here. And it would have been fine if she hadn't ducked because our exit would have been here, we would have hit vitals, would have been good. I went wrong and the deer went the wrong, <laughs> the wrong way too, but I just want to show as a learning lesson. As I was facing it, it's quartering to me. It was actually uh, facing the opposite way. This is, this is how, this is 
we're gonna get the example done here. The situation happened pretty quick. The does were getting chased by bucks and get, just getting run around. So I didn't have a whole lot of time to range. So I ranged the estimated spot where I thought she would walk out. If she did, she ended up going that way. And she ended up being a little bit behind that. But I took my 40 pin, she was about 38, 39 yards. And I put my 40 pin right about here and since she was a little shorter than that she ended up being higher so my actual shot placement was right there and that's in where you want to go and because of this angle right here the quartering two where the arrow exits on the back side that's going to be in more vitals so what happened was she ducked and a really good bow hunter would anticipate this a really good bow hunter was probably aimed right here. With most bows, I think, past 30 yards, you're gonna get some string jump a little bit. It's better to anticipate that and just, just aim a little bit lower. That way you get a hard shot if they don't, double lung if they do. Uh, my arrow ended up a little higher and then she ducked. So I actually ended up getting her right up here. And that is called no man's land because there's really nothing in there. There's no vitals, it's in between the spine you could spine a deer and, and knock it down just right where it stands. Uh, right here is obviously the goods. Here is, is brisket, but right here between these shoulders is just a bad spot to be. So it went in at this angle and hit the other shoulder blade on the back side. And uh, she would have lived probably, most likely. I've actually seen deer that have been hit in this area a few times. There was really not much blood at all because there's just no... There's no vitals going on, it's just straight meat. By the way guys, uh, Mullet Man and my boy Outlaw, link down below. Mullet Man had a crazy hunt this morning, rattling up some bucks, came in like 10 yards right in front of him. And then you guys saw some of the some of when uh, me and Jared were hunting, but he's going on a lot of hunts this season. So if you want to follow them all, they're linked down below. And on the next video, uh, we're gonna be cleaning this gear up. I gotta take it to the processor. And uh, we are on to another hunt. I'm going to be doing a rifle hunt uh, coming up in another state. So you guys stay tuned. We're going to. Hey, good. Hey, good. That's right, y'all. So hit the like button for that. And we will see y'all on the next one.